Hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of my Unreal Engine real-time caustics tutorial series. Yesterday, we talked about compiling an Unreal Engine 4 build of NVRTX with Visual Studio, and now today we're going to be moving on into the project settings as well as the post-process volume. We're going to make it perfect and optimal for building our scene, and then we're going to move on from there. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so from here we're going to go and click the settings button and click on plugins. So there's a couple of plugins we need to enable. So first type in movie render queue. So from here I want you to make sure that you have the movie render queue checked. The additional passes as well as the DLAA and DLSS. This is a new way to scale up our shots so that we can have a higher quality image. Then type in NVIDIA. So here with NVIDIA we're going to enable the global illumination and the relax denoiser and then we're also going to type in ProRes and from here we're going to enable that and restart. It's going to compile for a little bit and then we should be back in our scene. So from here let's click on settings and then project settings and then from there I'm just going to bring it up into the top click on rendering and then from here we're just going to be moving down until we see the ray tracing setting. So let's find it here. Okay, yep. You can click hybrid translucency, but it takes a lot more work to get the caustics to work. So then we'll just move on to RHIs. Make sure you got DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 and 12 checked next to it. And then we're just going to look through a couple more of these settings in the rendering. Make sure we get everything checked. Make sure texture streaming is checked. Okay. So we're going to close that. Now we're going to click on visual effects and we're going to come up to the top and drag in a post process volume. I'm going to just put it here in the back so it's out of the way. So, from here, we're just going to come into the post-process volume details and we're going to type in Unbound. And what Unbound does is it allows you to affect the entire scene with the settings inside the volume. This en enables us to control the same things that we would use console variables for in the movie render queue. So, here we're going to just activate a couple of ambient occlusion settings just because I think it makes the scene look a little bit better. It's not required, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Then, I'm just going to close these, then I'm going to open up Global Illumination, and from here, I'm going to check these two, and I'm going to come into here, make sure that we've got Final Gather checked, and set our max bounces to 10. 10 is a really good number, and then you can change the samples per pixel, I'm going to leave it as is. So then we're going to come down, and we're going to click on Mesh Caustics, finally the part we've all been waiting for. So, here, I'm going to go to um, 512 by 512. You can do 128 as well for more optimized speeds. I'm going to do 512 because I like it. Um, then you can check a couple of these. Make sure your max trace depth is about 5. And then check enable dispersion. Then you're going to need that. So once we've moved on from here, we're going to go to the motion blur because we like motion blur in our scene and set the target frame rate to 24 frames a second. Okay, next we're gonna go, uh, we don't need light prop propagation, but we do need ray tracing and reflections. We're gonna enable the shadows, and we're just gonna leave it as is. Then we're gonna make sure it includes translucent objects. Then we're gonna go into the ray tracing translucency, and change it from raster to ray tracing, and don't, don't click on hybrid translucency. Then click on Ray tracing translucency. Enable absorption. Enabling absorption makes your glass look so much better. So make sure that you check that. That that will make a huge difference. And then also ensure that refraction is checked here. So moving forward from here, I guess check a couple more spots. Um, okay, that's pretty good. Now it's time to move on to the next part of this tutorial, which we will be covering materials and light settings as well as setting up your scene to render your caustics. So, I'll see you in the next episode.